Dear student, welcome to EPG Pathsala Biophysics. This is paper 11, Cellular and Molecular Biophysics. This is module 33. In this module, we will discuss enzyme linked immunosorbent assay that is ELISA. I am Dr. Karthikeyan Pithuswami from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. Now, let us begin with the introduction of ELISA. Enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is one of the most common immunoassay technique used in both research laboratories and diagnostic laboratories. ELISA is used for the detection and quantification of biological substances such as proteins, peptides, antibodies and hormones. First of all, we should know what is an immunoassay because ELISA is an immunoassay, right? So, we should know what is an immunoassay. Immunoassay is an analytical technique used for the quantification of an analyte based on antigen antibody reaction. We all know that antigen antibody reactions are highly specific. This specificity and the high affinity of antibodies for their antigens coupled with the ability of antibodies to cross link antigens allow the identification and quantification of specific substances by a variety of immunoassay techniques. Now, let us discuss about the labels we use in immunoassay. What is the meaning of label? Label can be an enzyme, it can be a radioactive substance, it can be a chemiluminescent substance, it can be a fluorometric substance. Either antigen or antibody can be labeled in immunoassay. The labeled component of immunoassay is also known as a tracer. Based on the type of the label, immunoassay can be classified into the following types. RIA that is radioactive immunoassay, ELISA enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, FIA FIA fluoro immunoassay and the fourth one is CLIA that is chemiluminescence immunoassay. So, we have seen the four types of immunoassay. Now, let me tell you the components of immunoassay in all these four types of immunoassay. All you need is antibodies, okay, because immunoassay is an antigen antibody reaction. So, you need antibody. The antibody can be only one or it can be more than one. It depends upon the type of immunoassay. In immunoassay, there is antigen antibody reaction, right? So, you should separate antigen antibody complex and the unreacted antigen and antibodies. So, there should be a system to separate these two. That is very, very important for in any immunoassay. And you should be able to detect the label. For example, there is fluorescence coming. You should detect that fluorescence, okay? That is a method for reduction of the label. Finally, for any analytical technique, we need standards that is the known concentration of antigen and antibody we use so that we can know the output. Okay? Standards and calibrators as in any type of assay we need in immunoassay. Okay? Let us begin with radio immunoassay. This is the assay developed by Dr. Rosalind Yalo and Dr. Salomon Burson. Okay? They developed this technique and they detected human insulin. In the year of 1977, Dr. Yalo was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, but Dr. Berson was no more at that time. RIA is a competitive binding assay in which radio labeled antigen competes with the known unlabeled antigen that is standards or the unknown unlabeled antigen that is your samples for the binding site of the fixed amount of antibody. So, what you are seeing is the illustration of radio immunoassay technique. Let me go one by one. You start from the beginning. A known concentration of the radio labeled analyte that is your antigen is allowed to react with the antibody. Then we add unlabeled antigen. This unlabeled antigen is known as cold antigen. You can see that it is denoted in the red colored triangle that is your unlabeled antigen. This unlabeled antigen will now compete for the binding sites of the antibodies. 
So, if the more unlabeled antigen is there, it will proportionately displace more labeled antigen. Okay. The second antibody against the first antibody. Now, you can see here in this diagram, we are adding the second antibody. It is yellow in color. Okay. Now, the second antibody against the first antibody will now separate the antigen antibody complex because we have already seen that separating the bound from unbound form is very very important. This can be achieved by two ways okay, using cephatex bound antibodies. Cephatex you know that cephatex beads. So, now the antibodies are bound to cephatex beads. Once you do centrifugation what will happen? This antigen antibody complex will be separated or we can also use micro titer plates. Here the unbound form is just washed off. So, to separate bound and unbound form either you use cephatex beads or you use micro titer plates. So, this is the standard curve. I have already told you that we use standards or calibrators. A standard curve is plotted for the known concentrations of unlabeled antigen added and the amount of labeled antigen bound to the antibody. Using this curve, the amount of unlabeled antigen present in the unknown sample that is your serum can be easily calculated. Now, we are coming to our topic that is ELISA. ELISA is the simplified and modified version of RIA. The principle is similar. The advantage is that it eliminates all the hazards associated with radioactivity and the equipments needed for measuring the radioactivity are all not needed in ELISA. Moreover, for performing radio immunosay, you have to get permission from radio pharmaceutical division of BARC that is Baba Atomic Research Center. In ELISA, there is no need to get all this permission. Now, let us see the properties of ELISA. ELISA is simple, sensitive, versatile and quantifiable. Let us see what is the meaning of each and every term. It is simple. We have already seen that unlike radio immunosay, we do not need any radioactive labels. So, it is very simple. We just use micro titer plates. Sensitive, there is signal amplification in ELISA. So, even a minute concentration of antigen can be detected. Okay. The sensitivity is similar to radio immunosay. Versatile, the same analyte can be detected by various systems. Okay, so, it is versatile. Quantifiable, the color produced can be read by multi-channel spectrophotometer. The color can be read by 450 nanometer. It all depends upon the label we use, enzyme label we use. Depends upon that, we can read the output. The data can be stored and analyzed statistically for future reference. Now, let us see the types of ELISA. There are four types of ELISA. Direct ELISA, indirect ELISA, sandwich ELISA, competitive ELISA. In the further slides, we will discuss each type of ELISA. Now, let us begin with direct ELISA. In direct ELISA, either the antigen or the antibody can be labeled. In direct antibody labeled ELISA, the antigen attached to the solid phase is reacted directly with an enzyme labeled antibody. So, as you can see in the diagram, there is only one antibody and that antibody is labeled to enzyme. That is why this is direct ELISA. Directly you are adding antibody. Okay. Advantages of direct ELISA is that it is quick because only one antibody. So, there is fewer steps are there. If you use another antibody that is secondary antibody, the secondary antibody can cross react. So, now as we are not using any secondary antibody, there is no cross reactivity. Direct ELISA has lot of disadvantages. The problem is, see you are using only one antibody that is primary antibody and you are labeling that primary antibody. When you label that antibody, the immunoreactivity of that antibody can be lost. Okay, that is very very important. And labeling of each and every primary antibody. For example, for every antigen, you have to have a labeled primary antibody. This is quite expensive. Okay, there is no flexibility in the choice of primary antibody. 
okay so direct allies are as lot of disadvantages that is why people came up with the next technique that is indirect ELISA. So, what you are seeing in the image is indirect ELISA. So, here if you see in the first you are seeing antigen coated well. So, here the antigen is coated in the well. See ELISA always need a solid support. That solid support we are providing with micro titer plates. Okay. So, antigen is coated in the well. In the next step after washing we are adding specific antibody for that antigen ok. So, here the antibody we are adding first is primary antibody ok remember this then we wash. So, excess antibody which is not bound to antigen will be removed in the washing step. In the next step we are adding another antibody which is against the primary antibody. It will go and bind to the FC region of your primary antibody. The secondary antibody is actually labeled. In direct ELISA, the primary antibody itself is labeled. But in indirect ELISA, the secondary antibody is enzyme labeled. After washing, now you can add the substrate of the enzyme. Now, this enzyme will convert the substrate into colored product. This colored product can be measured by spectrophotometer. The rate of color formation is proportional to the amount of specific antibody. Clear? Indirect ELISA has more advantage compared to your direct ELISA. They are a wide variety of labeled secondary antibodies are available. For example, you are having a primary antibody it belongs to a species for example you are raising that primary antibody in goat. So, now if you use anti goat antibodies secondary antibodies anti goat antibodies labeled with any kind of enzyme you can use that secondary antibodies against various primary antibodies. Even though the primary antibodies are detecting different antigen their FC region will be similar. So, you use only one secondary antibodies for hundreds of primary antibodies ok. So, this is cost effective ok. So, that is why indirect ELISA is versatile. Here we are not labeling the primary antibody ok. The primary antibody is unlabeled. So, in direct ELISA what we have seen when you label the primary antibody the immunoreactivity of the antibody will be lost. But here we are labeling only secondary antibody, primary antibody is the one which is going to bind to the antigen. So, there is no chance of loss of immunoreactivity. Here the sensitivity is increased because each primary antibody contains several epitopes that can be bound to labeled secondary antibody ok. So, there is amplification. Moreover, the enzyme, enzyme will act on more substrate. So, the antigen is small, but there are primary antibodies binding and more secondary antibodies are binding to the enzyme more substrate is coming. So, there is signal amplification ok and moreover this secondary antibody if you label enzyme it is ELISA. You can also use chemiluminescence or fluorescence. So, you just change the label different detection methods can be used in the same primary antibody based upon the label in the secondary antibody. So, use primary antibody is same, but if you change the secondary antibody label, you can change the method. So, it is a highly versatile technique. Clear? Disadvantages of indirect ELISA are cross reactivity of the secondary antibody and here you have to keep some incubation. After primary antibody wash, then again secondary antibody incubation wash. So, the time consumed is higher compared to your primary antibody which is just one antibody technique ok. But these disadvantages will not discourage you to perform this technique. The next technique is sandwich ELISA. As the name suggests sandwich, what is the meaning of sandwich between two right? So, here the antigen is sandwiched between two antibodies ok. So, the plate 
that is your micro titer plate is coated with one antibody that antibody is known as capture antibody clear now you add the sample which contains antigen okay now the primary antibody will capture your antigen after washing step now you add another antibody which is known as detection antibody okay the first antibody is capture antibody the second antibody is detection antibody these two antibodies they are detecting the different epitopes of the antigen that is very important if they are detecting the same epitope there won't be any sandwiching okay they should detect the different epitopes of the same antigen so that in this technique the antigen should have multiple epitopes if the antigen is having only one epitope you cannot use sandwich elisa so as i told you it is very important the antibodies used should detect various epitopes so in sandwich elisa haptans cannot be detected what is hapten for example if you want to detect thyroid hormone thyroid hormone is a very small molecule okay it don't have lot of epitopes so thyroid hormone is a hapten you cannot use sandwich elisa for the detection of thyroid hormones okay remember this we have already discussed sandwich elisa now we are seeing the illustration see the micro titer plate is already coated with antibody that is your which antibody capture antibody okay usually capture antibodies we can use monoclonal antibodies because we, we are going to detect only one epitope okay after washing you are adding the sample it can be serum or cell lysate anything okay now the antigen will be captured by your capture antibody then wash after that now you are adding labeled second antibody that is your detection antibody because it is labeled with the enzyme okay and this detection antibody it is going to bind to the different epitope remember that after washing you add the substrate now the substrate will be converted by the enzyme into colored product the rate of color formation is proportional to the amount of antigen this we have seen in the indirect elisa also the principle is similar clear the final type of elisa is competitive elisa competitive elisa is similar to radio immunoassay both unknown antigen that is your sample and the known antigen that is your standard they will compete with each other for the fixed amount of antibody available so in competitive elisa we are detecting antigen i told you that haptans cannot be detected by sandwich elisa so which technique you will use for detection of haptans we are using competitive elisa for haptans like thyroid hormones we are using competitive elisa so what you are seeing is the illustration of competitive elisa so here we are incubating antibody with antigen to be measured that is unknown amount of antigen okay then we are adding this to antigen coated well okay then you wash add enzyme conjugated secondary antibody here we are getting color in competitive elisa the color developed will be inversely proportional to the analyte that is very important okay so now what you are seeing is the comparison of four types of elisa we have studied so far see direct indirect sandwich and competitive so if you see in sandwich elisa the well is coated with antibody in other types well is coated with usually antigen okay in indirect elisa what we are detecting is antibody okay indirect elisa is used for the detection of antibodies that is very important another important point as we have already studied competitive elisa is used for the detection of haptans like thyroid hormones okay so now diagrammatically let us compare the four types of elisa first see direct elisa in direct elisa the micro titer plate is coated with antigen here you are directly adding the primary antibody which is labeled with the enzyme okay that is why it is direct elisa in indirect elisa what is happening the well is coated with antigen 
you are adding primary antibody now you are adding secondary antibody secondary antibody is going to bind to the fc portion of your primary antibody secondary antibody is the one which is labeled in sandwich elisa see it, the well is coated with antibody that is very important capture antibody is there now comes detection antibody now you can actually add another antibody also okay so it depends upon the technique now you, they are using the third antibody which is actually labeled okay it all depends upon the technique so in competitive elisa we have already discussed so here there is competition for antibody between two different antigens okay that is very important the antibody is same but antigen are different the antigen can be known amount of antigen or the unknown amount of antigen that is the sample so there is a competition okay so far we have studied the different types of elisa now it's very important to understand the steps of elisa the steps of elisa techniques are coating blocking addition of antibodies washing and detection let us see one by one first step is coating in coating previously they used to manually coat the microtiter plates with antigens here because of the hydrophobic interaction there will be coating nowadays pre coated elisa kits are available okay pre coated kits have advantage there is no time consuming for coating overnight coating step is needed if you use pre coated elisa plates that time is same next is blocking so in coating we have seen that antigen is coated in the micro titer plate this antigen is not going to bind to the entire surface of your micro titer plate there will be empty space if you add the antibody the antibody can go on bind to the empty space right so now we have unwanted antibody binding okay to avoid this we use this blocky we use this blocking blocking is done after coating and it ensures that there is no empty spaces are left in the plate surface blocking buffers are used to prevent non specific binding of proteins to the plate optimal blocking buffer maximizes the signal to noise ratio we will see what is that signal to noise ratio in the detection technique as you can see in the image this yellow colored triangle is the antigen okay you see the antigen is binding only to a few space there is lot of space left so we have to ensure that there is no empty space left in the plate so we are blocking this empty space with following proteins for example you can use 1 percentage bsa that is your bovine serum albumin 1 percent bsa is the most commonly used blocking technique okay you can also use serum you can also use non fat dry mill or casein or gelatin in phosphate buffered saline that is your pbs so you use blocking buffer this is very very important clear so i was telling you about signal amplification right let us see what is signal amplification this we have already discussed in indirect elisa but still let me repeat again so that you can understand better enzyme labeled secondary antibodies are responsible for signal amplification each primary antibody can be bound by more than one secondary antibody okay similarly each enzyme will process multiple substrate into colored product right so this leads to amplification of the signal initial signal initial signal is the antigen okay so now one antigen can be bound by many antibodies many primary antibodies can be bound by many secondary antibodies and the secondary antibody is labeled with enzyme one enzyme can catalyze the conversion of thousands of substrate into product so there is amplification in each step clear so this signal amplification is responsible for the high sensitivity of elisa the final step in all elisa system is detection step so in detection we use enzyme substrate system the enzyme converts substrate into a detectable colored product we use commonly two enzymes they are harsh radish peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase 
horse radish peroxidase as the name suggests it is derived from horse radish it is from the radish it is not derived from horse okay it is a commonly asked viva question it is derived from horse radish okay it is derived from the plant not from animal okay horse radish peroxidase that is hrp is the most commonly used enzyme label in elisa system so let us see the reaction catalyzed by this horse radish peroxidase it's a peroxidase so all peroxidases they will act on hydrogen peroxide okay when a peroxide act on hydrogen peroxide nascent oxygen and water is produced this nascent oxygen will act on chromogenic substrate we are going to add that chromogenic substrate can be anything again the most commonly used chromogenic substrate is dab or tmb dab is diamino benzidine diamino benzidine when it is acted upon by nascent oxygen it will become brown colored product this brown colored uh, product can be spectrophotometrically measured so i told you that dab is a chromogenic substrate for harsh radish peroxidase there are other chromogenic substrate like tmb and abts okay so these are all the various chromogenic substrate if you see luminol that is different okay luminol it is going to produce luminescence okay it is not calorimetric technique it is luminescence based technique second enzyme is alkaline phosphatase the problem with alkaline phosphatase is it is a very big enzyme okay horse radish peroxidase is a very small enzyme so it is easily you can label you can conjugate this enzyme with antibody easily because it of the small molecular weight but alkaline phosphatase has high molecular weight okay but still they use alkaline phosphatase also for some elisa systems as the name suggests phosphatases such are hydrolases they will go on cleave phosphate you see in the image fluorescent diphosphate is there now alkaline phosphatase will act on the fluorescent diphosphate it will cleave the phosphate now fluorescence is free so it will produce color okay so these are all the chromogenic substrate used in alkaline phosphatase as we have already seen that all the chromogenic substrate they will have phosphate nitrophenyl phosphate npp para nitrophenyl pyrophosphate pnpp bromochloro indolyl pyrophosphate see there is a phosphate in bcip we use nitro blue tetrasodium to enhance the color okay then fluorescent diphosphate so all these chromogenic substrate they have phosphate what you are seeing is the various types of detection technique so so far we have seen about calorimetric technique substrate is produced into colored product there are other types of detection like chemiluminescent detection and fluorescent detection nowadays this clia chemiluminescent immuno assay is taking the place of elisa at least in diagnostic laboratories elisa can also be automated and this chemiluminescence assay can be highly automated okay because of this automation facility diagnostic laboratories they are nowadays using this chemiluminescence assay for detection of hormones tumor markers and all okay so chemiluminescence and fluorescence these are all the other detection methods finally it is very important to differentiate ls part from elisa ls part technique is similar to elisa but it is different and ls part plate with a polyvinylidene fluoride that is pvdf membrane is coated with a cytokine specific antibody so in ls part this technique we are going to find number of cytokine producing cells so to detect the number of cytokines producing cells we are coating the plate with cytokine specific antibody that is your capture antibody now you add cells the cells can be cultured or it can be thawed from storage or freshly isolated cells so add these cells and the stimulus you have to add the antigen stimulus then only the cells will produce cytokines right so you are adding that you incubate that okay and you also add ans simulated cells also for comparison the cells are washed away after incubation okay 
the cells are going to produce cytokines right so cytokines are produced they will be captured by this capture antibodies okay then you add enzyme labeled second antibody that is your detection antibody see the steps are similar to elisa but the purpose is different okay addition of a chromogenic substrate leads to enzyme catalyzed spot development so as i told you the difference between elisa and ls spot is very important in elisa what we are detecting we are detecting the concentration of the cytokine of interest produced by all the cells in culture so here we are detecting the concentration of cytokine but here in elis part we are detecting the number of cells that produce that cytokine okay so each dot is going to represent a cell that is very important let us differentiate elis part and elisa in elisa we are detecting the concentration of cytokine produced by a cell okay so here it is concentration that is amount but in elis part we are detecting the number of cells that secreted that cytokine okay so we are getting dots spots okay this spots denotes the cells okay in elis part you can detect parallel secretion of two proteins by the same cell but in elisa you can you cannot do that detection and color production is happening in the cell culture plate in elis part but in elisa it is all happening in the supernatant okay and it is happening in the elisa plate it's in the micro titer plate here it will be like cell culture plate and stopping the color reaction is by washing with water and drying the plate in elis part in elisa it is very important that we add sulfuric acid okay sulfuric acid is added to stop the color production final analysis happens in a dry phase in elis part it all happens in liquid phase you just take the micro titer plate you insert into the spectrophotometer and you read okay here detection device is elis part reader or scanner there is a camera there is a visual analysis software so it, this elis part device is sophisticated compared to your elisa reader elisa reader is nothing but a spectrophotometer it's a very simple clear the advantage of elis part is that and you can store this you can do further analysis of the elis part culture plate okay it's dry you can store it but in elisa once you to take the reading you cannot document that okay only that reading is documentation the procedure you cannot document okay it will become dry you cannot redo it clear i hope you have understood various principles of elisa various techniques in the elisa the difference between elis part and elisa now let me summarize what we have studied so far immuno assay is an analytical technique used for the quantification of analyte based on the antigen antibody reaction based upon the label the immuno assay technique can be of various type radio immuno assay enzyme linked immuno sorbent assay fluoro immuno assay and chemiluminescence immuno assay radio immuno assay is a competitive binding assay in which radio labeled antigen competes with the known unlabeled antigen that is standard or the unknown unlabeled antigen that is your sample for the binding site of a fixed amount of antibody elisa is the simplified and modified version of ria elisa is simple sensitive versatile and quantifiable direct elisa indirect elisa sandwich elisa and competitive elisa are the four types of elisa we have already studied big molecules are detected in the sandwich elisa while small molecules that is haptans are detected in the competitive elisa one percentage bovine serum albumin is used in elisa for blocking we use micro titer plates that is polystyrene plates for solid support okay that is why that word immunosorbent that sorbent is that polystyrene plate that solid support is that immunosorbent okay enzyme labeled secondary antibodies are responsible for the signal amplification horse radish peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase are the two most commonly used enzyme labels in elisa chemiluminescent assay is taking over the role of elisa at least in diagnostic laboratories 
Ellis part is an immunoassay technique used to find out the number of cells that secrete a particular protein. For example, it can be a cytokine, it can be a growth factor. So, with this, we are completing module 33 enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. I hope you enjoyed this module. I wish you all the very best for your bright future. Thank you very much.